difference is 2 times pi times 4.5, which is approximately 9 times pi, which is 28.2. 27433 that's good enough. So that's how many now this is not square units because remember this would be just how far you would walk if you walked around the outside of the circle. So we walk about 28.27433 units. If this were in inches then these would be inches that we'd be walking. It would be a very short walk. Now, what about finding area? Well, the formula for the area of a circle is A equals pi times the radius squared. So once again, we're just going to plug in the radius that we found, 4.5, and we will have area equals pi times 4.5 squared. That's how many squares it would take to cover this. Obviously, it's not going to be a bunch of whole ones because you can't fit a bunch of squares in a circle. So 4.5 squared times pi is going to give us, this is approximately 63.6173 square units. And that's how you go about finding your circumference, also perimeter of your circle, and the area of your circle, which is approximately 63 square units. Now in this problem, I'm being asked to find the perimeter and area of a semicircle. As you might guess, this is going to be related to our circle formulas, and we're going to want to know what it would take to walk all the way around the outside of this semicircle, including this piece, and that's my perimeter, and for the area, how many squares it would take to cover up this whole surface of the semicircle. Here's my representation of the semicircle, and we're first going to find the perimeter. Well, if it were a whole circle, we'd use our formula for circumference, which is 2 times pi times r, so we'd need the radius. So let's start by finding the radius. Well, all the way across the circle is 100, so we need to go halfway across the circle, so the radius will be 1 half of 100, which is going to be 50. Now, we're going to use that 50. The tempting thing to do is just say, okay, well, we'll take the circumference, a semicircle is half a circle, so we'll divide it by 2. Well, that's a good place to start. So let's start with 1 half, we're going to divide our circumference by 2, times 2 times pi times our radius, which is 50. But here's the problem with just doing that. If we only talk about going around the circle, we start here, work our way to here, and then we stop. We've completely missed this last piece of the semicircle, because this is only upon the circular part. So we need to add in this last piece of the semicircle, the plus 100, and that will give us our whole perimeter. So when we calculate that, we get 257.0796 units. Now the perimeter of the semicircle is actually the harder of the two to do. The area is very easy because the area we were just covering the semicircle. When we did the circle we were just covering the two pieces of the circle so it turns out the idea that we used of cutting one half of the circumference for first finding part of the perimeter is going to work exactly that way for finding the area. So again, our area formula for a circle is area equals pi times the radius squared. And basically, we're going to want to find the area of the circle and then cut it in half because we have half a circle. So the area of this thing is going to be 1 half times pi times our radius of 50 squared. So that will turn out to be 
an area of 3,926.9908. Now, square units. Now, when I'm doing my calculations with pi, I'm actually using the pi button on my calculator. If you have a TI-83, you have a pi button right here that you can get due by second and then the caret button. Most of your calculators will have such a button for pi. If not, then you're going to want to use four to five decimal places for pi when you're doing your calculations. And remember, pi is that number that's about 3.14159 and so on that you use whenever you're working with circles. I warned you there would be word problems, so here's the one for this, this particular section. We're going to walk 100 yards south, then 100 yards west, then we're going to turn and walk 30 yards further south. And the question is, how far are we from where we originally started? Now, in order to do this problem, it's going to help to draw a picture. So let's draw that picture and see what it's going to look like. All right, we start by walking 100 yards south. So we're going to start here and head south, 100 yards. OK, it's supposed to be a straight line. Then we walk 100 yards west. No, how far did we walk west? We walked 120 yards west. So most maps have west going this way, so we're going to walk 120 yards west. And then we walk another 30 yards south. Yes, I know this is not drawn to scale. And the question is, how far are we from where we started? Well, we started here, and if we draw a straight line to where we ended, again, it's supposed to be a straight line, it's that red line we want to find. Now this looks like a right triangle, and this looks like a right triangle, and the two pieces of the red line would make up the hypotenuse. The only problem with treating those as two right triangles and working to find each of their hypotenuses, maybe it's hypotenuse, is that we don't know where it runs into that 120 yards that we walked west. So the thing that's going to work better for this is to look at what if we moved the 120 yards west down so that it's at the bottom. Well, it's still going to be 120. So that's still 120. And if we take our 30 yards that we moved, walked south and instead had put it over here with our original 100 yards south, that's just going to be another 30 yards for a total of 130 yards in the south direction. Then the red line is the hypotenuse of a right triangle where one side is 120, one side is 130, these two sides are my legs, and the third side is what I'm looking for, C. So I'm going to calculate 120, oh, so I can use the Pythagorean Theorem. So I'm going to put in my legs into the Pythagorean Theorem, so I'll get 120 squared plus 130 squared is equal to C squared. And I dropped my calculator. So let's calculate that. Over here on the left, I have 120 squared plus 130 squared. That gives me 31,300 is equal to c squared. When I take the square root of both sides of that, I get both a positive and a negative answer, which is plus or minus 176.91806 for c, but I'm talking about how far I walked. That's a distance, and distances are always positive. So since I only have a distance and it's positive, then my C must be 176.91806. And that's going to be our last example for areas and perimeters. And we threw in the Pythagorean theorem a couple of times. So